Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to an update for the last week in October. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've done a video. Life has been particularly unkind to the family and I in the past few weeks, but we'll keep going forward. We'll see where it takes us. Let's dive right in. Recommended batteries table. Finally, I'm updating it. There have been so many changes with the 2700s um, in my approach to rating. You'll t hear about that with the new uh, ratings tables. I just didn't know what I wanted in the recommended batteries table. And, you know, removing 26650s table completely, uh, the 18350s, those tasks are getting old. There are a lot of things to think about. I am doing it. Now, as always, the recommended batteries table is not a list of the only batteries I recommend. It's just a few to get started with if you have no idea what to pick or what to use. I'm splitting the two tables, a mech table and a regulated uh, device table. You can use any battery in any mod as long as it fits and the current rating is high enough for the equivalent wattage rating and I'm hoping it'll be useful to a few people. That'll be out uh, hopefully by the end of the week. There will be a lot of really good batteries missing but I can't put 15, 18, 650s down for like mechs or regulated. That's going to make new vapors heads explode. They want to choose from five is even too many. They just want one or two. Next thing, getting back to charging, uh, charger and mech testing, hopefully very soon. Got a huge backlog of that. I apologize to those who sent in deeply, honestly apologize to those who sent in mechs uh, to be tested. The company's life has been interesting lately. And uh, so we're going into those. Um, now, the one thing I hear from so many people is, oh, good, Mooch, you're testing these, so now I can find out which chargers are safe. No. There's always a risk. These are mass-produced electronics. And they, they can always be, I could test 100 units over six months. And the next unit off the line could have an error in assembly and be, quote, unsafe you know, cause some kind of failure or something like that once you had it. So there's always some kind of risk. And I'll always recommend, you know, charging on a non-flammable surface when you're round, when you're awake, et cetera, and so forth. So I can't do safety testing. That requires audits of the factory, uh, the documentation, their, their manufacturing practices, their quality control procedures, uh, doing lots of sample testing and stuff like that. I can't do the safety testing. I can look at durability, I can look for obvious errors, I can look at temperatures that it runs at, but I can't do the one thing that's requested most and that frustrates me greatly, but I, I don't want people to think, oh, Mooch tested it, it's safe. No. New ratings tables for the 18650 and 2700s, 2700s, 2650s. Uh, both those tables now, there are two huge changes. The first change is each table is only gonna have the batteries I tested for that current year. So the tables will only have batteries that tested in 2018. All the older batteries will be moved to an expired, outdated test table. The numbers will be removed, the rating numbers, and it'll just be uh, color-coded yellow, orange, red to indicate the degree of overrating or lack of overrating for those batteries. And that'll just be a reference for you to see, hey, okay, how did company X do on previous years with rating their batteries? There's a big, the second change is a big, big addition Safety documentation, do the companies, the battery wrapping companies have those documents. The safety data sheet, which tells you the chemical composition so we can find out if it's a lipo or not, because I think we're gonna have a couple surprises about that. And then also the data sheet, a proper data sheet from the battery wrapping company. But I also am asking for the safety test report. It is a basic report every battery has to pass in order to be shipped. It's called UN 38.3. So the basic test, but it's a start. And at least we know the batteries have passed some kind of testing. And if the battery wrapping, battery wrapping company commits to a data sheet, doing a data sheet, they're probably not gonna be swapping cells under the wrap every couple of months because they're not gonna wanna do a data sheet if they do that. So it's just a way to try to get some discipline into it, to find out what we're using. Are we using lipo cells or not? Because I think some of the 18350s and 26650s might be lipo chemistry. That's mere rumor right now, I don't know. Uh, but these tables will be coming out uh, probably next week. I'm trying to find a balance between giving some kind of information and just saying, oh, I'm never gonna touch rewraps. Some countries, all they have are rewraps. 
thousands and thousands of vapors are going to buy rewraps anyway, no matter what I test or not test. Let's give them some information. And this is my attempt at trying to do that. I'll have a whole lot more information once the tables are out. Because right now I think I'm just rant, uh, rambling. I knew it was an R word. Um, the 26650 table has been removed. All those tests were too old. Uh, I hope to do 26650 testing later this year uh, for the, over the holidays and try to get, us, get another batch of uh, 26650s up. But right now, I have none to recommend because I don't know what's underneath the wrap anymore. Or I can't confirm what's underneath the wrap anymore. <sighs> A new policy for me. Cells that do change what's under the wrap, like the latest iJoy, the three different versions of the 2700, 3000 Ma, if I test, one, if I test a, a cell and then we find out later that they change what they wrap, I will not be retesting that cell. I'm just going to tag it as unknown in the, date, in the ratings table and that's it. I'm not retesting these. I spent a huge amount of time, uh, August, September, even going into October, trying to find out all these different cells, whether they changed or not. I, I got no new testing done. I cannot keep going back. And retesting. I've tested over 300 cells now. So I'm just going to say, hey, you change the cell without changing the wrap, you are now back to being an unknown cell. That's it. Um, new cells coming out. My last two tests, the Molly cell M42 and the P42. A, uh, the M42, 4000 Ma, 20 amp, beats the Sanyo 15 amp NCR 2700B. This will probably be this will be appearing first quarter of next year. These are early production samples, pre-production samples. This will probably be the best cell, best 2700 available up to about 45 watts, 15 amps. Uh, anything much above that and things like the Galici S32 and the other uh, 2700s available, the Molly Cell, INR, 2700A, the beige one, will be a better choice. But because the 4000 Ma, I think of it, this is more like an energy cell, 4000 Ma, 15, 20 amps, where you get the other ones, you know, it might only be 3000 Ma, but you can get a 30 amp rating. So this will be in the recommended batteries table once it comes out, but this is the kind of balance, the trade-off you have to consider when getting cells. Then there is the P42A. I don't know where this is actually going to focus. I hope that worked out. Uh, oh, this actually beats the Samsung 40T. It's a 30 amp battery, 4000 Ma. 30 amp, 21700, uh, the M42A is a 2700. It actually rivals the 30T. The 30T out hits it for about the first third of usage, but then this hits harder than the 30T. There is no better one. I can't distill this down to one word, that's better or that's better. You're gonna have to try both. Now, there may be a good pile of these become available for the end of the year, but treat that as mere rumor right now. Otherwise, these are available in the first quarter of 2019. So, some nice stepping up to the plate from Molly Cell and uh, hopefully more good news from them towards the end of the year and beginning of next year with stuff that's in the pipeline and stuff they'd like to do for the community. They are targeting our community for new cells, for development. They're listening to us. They're the only OEM, they're in Canada and Taiwan, who want to work with the community. And I am supporting this like crazy. Also got something, a new toy which are always fun. This unassuming little box with a sapphire window at the front is a near-infrared spectroscopy evaluation model module from Texas Instruments. We can use this, hopefully, hopefully, to determine the chemistry of cells where we can't find out otherwise. There's going to be a lot of testing done. It may not work at all. I wouldn't have spent all the money on this myself. If I knew it was going to work, I would have bought it. But I have no idea whether this is going to work or not. And the research I did, maybe, maybe not. So there'll be a lot of testing with this. Namely, you can aim it, open up a battery, aim it at the anode and the cathode materials, positive and negative materials. It shines a light onto the material. The frequencies and intensity of the light that bounces back in the infrared spectrum can tell you what it's made out of. And it works fantastic for alcohols, uh, foods, organic compounds. We'll see how it works for what's inside a battery. A huge shout out and thank you to my patrons. Um, Thank you. you your, your support has been incredible. Your patience has been incredible lately. I've, I've, I've lost some of you uh, in the past few weeks and, and I understand. I haven't been able to do everything that I've wanted to do. Uh, for two months, two weeks out of every month, you 
pay a lot of my bills and that lets me do all the research and all the table updating and all this hundreds of hours of behind the scenes stuff that I've been doing. A lot of that's coming to a head now. It's being done. It's being completed. Going back to the more visible stuff, these videos, uh, the charger and mech testing and other things. And, and I want to thank you for sticking with me and certainly any questions, any concerns, anything you want to bring up, just get hold of me. Some of you are aware of a particular battery wrapping company that's been trolling and spamming and saying some pretty nasty things and some pretty funny things uh, about me. Evidently, I'm vile um, and a mad dog, which I'm kind of proud of. Actually, I'm kind of proud of vile. I've never been called vile. And mad dog mooch, that just, that's got a nice ring to it. And I think there's a, a really good logo in there someplace. After three and a half years of trying to think of a logo, I think mad dog mooch, I think there's a logo in there. Anyway. Some of you know who this company is. I'm not saying the name, but I'd ask for anybody who, who wants to say something to them if they see that company say something to me or about me and they're saying things about me in messages to people who they, who want, they would like to buy their batteries. They're saying it on my posts. They're saying it on their posts. Be calm and be respectful in your comments. If you're not, if you're just cursing them out and stuff like that, well, it won't affect them. They'll just, pfft. when does that affect any of us? You just go, ah, pfft, idiot, and you move on. But if you're respectful and you say something like, I don't like what you did and I'm never going to buy your batteries, that hits them in the wallet. That, that they'll notice. And also, they don't get to play the victim. If a bunch of people run over to the website and start spamming insults and curses and stuff all over the place, it does nothing but let them play the martyr, play the victim and say, look what the community is doing to us, da 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 da. And that just distracts from what they were doing in the first place. Usually a severe, ridiculous overrating of a battery that I call them out on. Then they get angry and the chain starts. So I would ask, I would ask that you just be very calm, very respectful and just let them know how you feel, any comments back to them. And uh, don't sink down to their level. Thank you for watching.